Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video and in this video we are going to talk about uh, nest chase with uh, mongoose. I mean the MongoDB. So if we are talking about MongoDB then nest chase provides this nest chase mongoose as a module and we can use the mongoose module dot for root for root async like type or a module dot for root and for root async. Similarly for dealing with the MongoDB database this is how we can create a schema models and we can create a schema from them like we just need to create a simple TypeScript class same as the type RM entities in the type RM we are creating entities so similarly in the MongoDB also we can create a schema and this is how we can define the relationships and we are using these annotations props to define the relationships like uh, user has a relationship with the post post has the relationship with the user here this uh, schema has the relationship with the owner owner is like a different collection so mongodb is a nosql and here with the nest js integration this is how we will initialize so if you see uh, you will you will find a similarities between type or a module and uh, mongoose module in mongoose module dot for root and for root async and when you are using that module in your uh, module when you are using uh, like you are using user module inside user module what you will do mongoose module dot for feature and you will pass that particular schema inside that particular module like here we are importing cat and cat schema that we are passing in the dot for feature so this this is somewhat similar to typo rm from the syntax perspective and this is how we will inject the models instead of repositories now we have models and then we can do new this dot uh, model name dot find find by id find many find by id and update and we can also inject the connections like you can maintain two different instance of uh, mongoose module like if i have a two different data source databases on a same host maybe i can connect to two different databases and i can run the queries against different different database that depends which particular connections you are looking for here you can see in the for feature we are passing second argument is the connection name so here we are looking for the connection name cats so whatever you are going to access in this mongoose in this particular module will be pointing to the database pointing to the cats connection okay so this is like a simple nest yes documentation which i'm talking through then uh, we will also write a simple application that talks about how to read and write using mongoose module so what we will do this is how we are injecting connections and there are different ways to initialize the connections and uh, then finally we have to inject these uh, models into our uh, services so that we can do read and write so here we are doing inject model and then lots of other things because mongoose provide uh, Mongo mongoose provides these uh, hooks like pre-save hooks before saving the records if I want to purchase if I want to do, do some changes because if you talk about Mungu's library Mungu's audio it provides hooks static methods uh, virtuals all those concepts if you are familiar with how you have worked with express express node.js Mungu's you do lots of th these things so similarly those things are also available uh, here we can register our hooks we can also register the plugins and uh, this is how we are defining our schemas and lots of other things now uh, let's not go into that uh, definition here we will focus on creating the model class and creating a schema out of it and then initializing this mongoose module dot for root by passing the mongodb uri and we will see how we can initialize the mongoose module dynamically by depending on the config module because this for root is pass, uh, is uh, allowing us to pass the url so here is the code so what we are doing first is we need to prepare our uh, docker container because we need to use uh, mongoose so what we are doing i have added a mongodb image inside docker compose yml and then there is a docker compose override there i am doing volume mapping and the port mapping so once i do docker compose up i would be able to see things running so that's what we are doing and this is the config module config module is just a simple uh, here I'm just using validation schema to make sure that I have all these properties available in the .env before I start my application which is a MongoDB URI 
உங்க யூஆர்ஐ போர் ஜிடபிள்யூடி சீக்ரெட் அண்ட் ஜிடபிள்யூடி எக்ஸ்பிரேஷன் டைம் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் ஹவு ஐ எம் இனிஷியலைசிங் த முங்கூஸ் மாடியூல் லைன் டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் முங்கூஸ் மாடியூல் டாட் ஃபோர் ரூட் அசிங் ஐ எம் இம்பார்ட்டிங் கான்ஃபிக் மாடியூல் அண்ட் இன் சைட் யூஸ் ஃபேக்ட்ரி ஆம் ரிட்டர்னிங் த கனெக்ஷன் யூஆர்ஐ ஃபோர் மொங்கோ டிவி ஸோ இட் இஸ் மேக்கிங் ஷுர் தட் வி ஆர் இனிஷியலைசிங் அ மொங்கூஸ் மாடியூல் ப்ராப்பர்லி வி டோன்ட் நீட் டு டூ மொங்கூஸ் டாட் கனெக்ட் பிகாஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஹவு வி ஆர் இனிஷியலைசிங் த mongoos uh, module right we are uh, initializing so it will take care of the connections and all if there is a database doesn't exist or if the connection url is wrong it will break our application won't start and then in the respective modules we can start consuming uh, i will we, can, we will just inject models here you can see in the post module what we are doing line 9 mongoos module dot four feature so here we are consuming the the post model and the post schema now inside the the post service we might be doing a inject model this post and that we are accessing uh, this model okay so here you can see we are doing inject model post dot name and then once you have injected that model into service we can access this model object this dot post model dot find find many update uh find by id and remove find by id and delete find all these things and you can also populate the dependencies because post has the depend uh, post has a relationship with author category and series these are the three different other collections and while creating a post this is how we are popular we are inserting the author so this is what we are doing find by id and replace that is update so we are doing a find operation based on id object id and then doing update so this is how you can create uh, the other modules also like post module user module category module uh, series module we have a schema and then we have a controllers and a services so here we can see that uh, we are using these controllers and inside a controller it's just like a crud operation create update delete and fetch so here we are just creating updating deleting and just a search query to find all the the blog posts having a, that particular word in the search query so this is how we have created a post module similarly there can be a user module where we have a user schema user module user service and user controller and if you see the post schema here we are defining the relationships because inside post we have a user who wrote that post the category of the post the series of the post right and these are referring to the different collections so you can see user as represented by author so it is uh, passed as object and this is how we will define the association so that when you do the dot populate that means this is how you need to resolve the reference i mean you have when you do dot populate category dot populate user so then they will start looking for that object id in the respective collections and this is how we will create a schema and we can also add the indexing in that particular schema okay so this is about posts so similarly uh, we have the other modules the main point is using these annotations which are available from this uh, mongoose module and this is how we are creating a schema from schema factory dot create for class and we are passing the post class and keep getting the schema and inside this module we are passing the the same thing mongoose module dot four feature and inside an array we are passing the the model name the class name and then schema so if even if you pass the multiple models to a module because in a particular module you might be accessing a user post uh, all these co collections so you need to pass them inside an array so this is simple uh, how we are doing it so the, the, that is a post then we have a category so category schema nothing much like the object id and name so we are getting a category schema if you look into the module here we are doing the same thing uh, mongoose module dot four feature and inside that we are passing a name and a schema so here okay so here we can see inject model we are injecting the category model in the service and then trying to do this dot model name dot find find by id and dot populate because dot populate will help us to populate the reference data like uh, who created this category the author of the category and all same as like we have done in the post like who is the author of the post what is the category and all so this is pretty much like how we are referencing these collections from one to another 
and we have written some CRUD APIs like the, the APIs for the post, API for the category, APIs for the user. And this is how it works. Now what we can do is, because this is simple walkthrough, like how we are doing it. Now what we will do is, we will just try to run this example and try to see how it really works end to end. So this is our simple setup. We have all these unknown variables. My MongoDB is up and running. And this is running on this port uh, 3002 and this is my MongoDB URL. So I have all these environment variables placed and uh, I will just talk about a uh, simple module. This is a mongoose module dot four root async. We can just do npm run start dev to just see this running. And then we will just try to play around with the APIs, how it really works. So this is a MongoDB. We are storing the data inside a MongoDB like insert, update, delete, all the operations. And this is a simple API spec. I mean, there are lots of APIs, right? Uh, login, log out, and then there is a category APIs, blog post APIs, and all. There are some APIs that are protected, like create operations, create post, uh, create category, all are protected by authorization header. Other than that, you can just fetch them. So this is our authentication API, authentication login. I can see, and it is returning me the token. So I can use this token, which is being returned from the API. And I can pass this token inside authorization. So here, uh, this is my APIs, and here I can just uh, show you the the snippet how we are doing authentication. It's a simple. I have done. I have discussed about this many times. Here we are using this uh, local authentication guard and JWT authentication guard. Local authentication guard is just extracting the username, password, email, and a password, and validating the user. And once the user is validated by comparing the password and email, it is putting the user on the request object. So at line 34, we will get the 33, we will get the user object. And then we will just create a token and we will return the token. I think we are not doing anything with the cookies here. We are just returning the token in token in the response and that that token can be used in the authorization header. So if there are some protected APIs which are using GWT auth guard, uh, inside a, as a as a route guard, then we need to pass uh, authorization header for them. So this is the JWT strategy, and this is the local authentication guard. So there are two things: strategy and guard. Strategy and guard. So we have a local strategy. For that we have a local authentication guard. We have a JWT strategy. For that we have a JWT authentication guard, and JWT authentication guard is extracting the uh, authorization header. I mean, it is accepting the token from the authorization header, which is coming with the bearer space token. And then it is validating it. And then once the validation is done, it is giving us the payload in this validate method where we can check that this user ID exists in the database or not. I mean, the user is active and exists in the database. Then we will allow you to access the API resources. So it's like a simple uh, auth guard, you can say we have. And inside this, we just also added a Swagger docs, which will help us to just expose the APIs on the Swagger uh, docs. And, and this is how we have a user service. So inside um, here, we can see all these APIs are running. Now we are logged in. So we are getting this uh, authorization token. We will start passing this token inside other protected APIs. So like blog post create. So here I'm passing this as a bearer space token inside authorization header and here i'm i can i i'm just passing some dummy title and content these are two properties and i will just try to create a blog here uh, by just i will just pass some dummy content and i will just send this request to the post it's a create api and it's protected so if you're not passing authorization header it won't allow you to create anything so it is just creating a blog post and it is populating the data also like, like the author information and author is populating the post and the categories all the other information again so it is simple uh, you can say uh, api is where we are just discussing the mongoose module concept how to initialize the, the mongoose module by passing the mongodb uri dynamically then how to add the the models inject the models inside a particular module using dot four feature and then how to access these models inside an appropriate uh, those services test all we are just testing these uh, different methods like give me all the post 
we can also uh, i think hit the search apis so this is the get api give you all the the post information then there is a search query that will give you the post based on the search query so here we can append the the search query here we can just create a duplicate of this and we'll just say search and here we can just pass search query equal to test and here you can see it's it's supplying the filter so in i mean there is a mongoose model provides that interface where we can search on a particular field based on the search keyword i mean it's a so it's the same uh, mongoose apis which allows us to search like here you can see if the filters are being passed then we are doing uh, how we are doing filtering of the data this dot post model dot find filters so we are applying these filters at line 30 filter dot dollar text where we are searching for this particular search keyword right and then we are just doing a dot populate series author all the other information and we are just awaiting dot find query find one so we are doing find by id and then doing dot populate author dot populate categories and series give me everything uh, based on the the post id i need a author information i need a series and categories so this is how we are defining the post schema and all the relationships of the post. So post contains author, categories, and the series. And we can also populate this information using dot .populate. dot .populate author, dot .populate series, dot .populate categories, and it will give you all the data. So this is all about uh, Nest.js Mongoose. I will just uh, expose this. I mean, I will just share this uh, GitHub example. So you can actually take a look and change this code accordingly. Okay, thanks everyone. So in the next video, we will talk uh, more about uh, other concepts like other ORMs and any other con remaining concepts. Otherwise, uh, what we will do is we are going to talk about uh, observables, like how to use observables with uh, the Nest JS. Till now, we were just talking about async await, uh, just services returning a promise, and uh, that promise we are just returning back from the controller and everything is working but what if we are started using observable so let's see that in the next video